as you can see in today's video, we're going to be going over density. Now, density has the definition is defined as the amount of mass per unit of volume. So density is mass and volume. This is the equation we use to calculate density. Density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. Now, before we go over some calculations, I'm just going to go over a quick description of a little detail about what density is, what mass is, and what volume is, and then we'll do some calculations at the end of the video. Okay, so density, we said, is the amount of mass per unit of volume. We abbreviate density with either a capital D or this Greek letter rho, which looks like kind of a fancy P, so capital D or rho. The units for density, now the base units, the really the base units for density is a kilogram per cubic meter, but usually in class we don't have a kilogram and a cubic meter of something. So we often measure the density in grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. Some materials have a higher density than water, which is like a metal, 2.70 grams per cubic centimeter for aluminum. And some materials have a lower density, like the density of benzene is 0 0.7 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, now density is, we can use this test tube. We can put some materials in the test tube and we can layer them like this and we can see their relative density. This piece of metal at the bottom, because it's at the bottom, it sinks to the bottom, has the highest density. And this liquid at the top, which I believe is an oil, has the lowest density. You can see the relative density from highest to lowest density. All right. Now, what about mass? What is mass? Mass is the amount of stuff something is made of, or a little better definition, which I think is the one you should know, is it is the amount of matter that an object has, because what's all that matter made of? Then atoms, and what are atoms made of? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. So in a sense, it's kind of a measure of how many are protons, neutrons, and electrons you have. But it's the amount of matter that an object has. The abbreviation is the M for mass. We said the base unit is the kilogram. Now, usually in class, we don't have a kilogram of something. We have grams, so we often use grams, but really the base unit for mass is the kilogram. And we can say that the mass of something is equal to 12.5 kilograms. Or we can say the mass of something, for example, is 65 grams. Now, here's an electronic balance we use to measure the mass. See, it's measuring mass here in grams. And you can have a mechanical balance that measures the mass of something here also. This is an electronic balance. This is known as a triple beam balance. You can see it has here three beams. Okay, now the next thing is the volume. Volume is the amount of space that an object has. I kind of think of it like how big something is. The bigger it is, the more volume it has because the more space it occupies. The abbreviation for the volume is a V. The unit is the liter, which we abbreviate as either a lowercase or an uppercase L. And like I said in class, we usually don't have liters of stuff. We have the lower volumes. So we often use milliliters, which is a thousandth of a liter. We use that for liquids. And this is the graduated cylinder that we use to measure the volume of liquids up to 500 milliliters. And if we're talking about a regular solid, like a square or a cube or a rectangle, then we use cubic centimeters because we can measure the length, the width, and the height. And the volume of regular solid is its length times its width, times its height, all right? So that's uh, density, mass, and volume. And we can also say, because the common units we said here are the milliliter and the cubic centimeter, they're related to each other because one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. For example, with water, we can say the density of water is one gram per milliliter, or we could say it's one gram per cubic centimeter. Okay, now we're gonna do the math part of the video. Density is the amount of mass per unit of volume. And we often can say that density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, and therefore use this equation, density equals the mass divided by the volume. And you need to be able to, in class, be able to rearrange this equation to solve for the volume and the mass. So the way we do that, we use the magic math triangle. This is the magic math triangle. We're going to take this equation, the D, the M, and the V, and put them in the magic math triangle. And you can see we have the right-hand side and the left-hand side. We kind of have a right-hand side and left-hand side of this triangle, kind of. The M is on the top on the right-hand side, so the M goes on the top. 
the, velo the velocity. The volume is on the bottom on the right hand side, so the volume goes on the bottom on the right. And the last place, which is kind of on the left, is left for the density. So that's the magic math triangle, and that's how you put the density, the mass, and the volume into the magic math triangle. Now, this is how we use the magic math triangle to solve for the mass and the volume, because you have this equation that's already solved for the density. Well, how do we solve for the mass? The first thing we're going to do is, what is the equation for the mass? What I tell my students is, take your pen or your pencil or your finger, or your thumb and cover up the mass like that and you can see you have left density and volume and they're next to each other and when those two things are next to each other like that that means we're going to multiply them and that means the mass is equal to the density times the volume. Now we can do the same thing for the volume. We cover up the volume, we want to solve for volume and you can see that what's left is the density and the mass and it's the mass over the density or really the mass divided by the density so in order to solve for volume it's mass divided by density and those are the three equations, the density equation, and then the same equation rearranged for the mass, and the same equation rearranged for the volume. Now let's just kind of check if we want to solve for density, we would just cover up the D, and we would have M over V, or it's M divided by V, and that's what the equation is. Okay, so those are the three equations. You should be given this equation, and then be able to use the magic math triangle or some other device to solve for M and V. Now let's do a few quick problems. Ebony is a time wood, relatively high density. This piece of ebony has a volume of 85 centimeters cubed and a mass of 90 grams, and we want to know what is the density. Well, here's the equation for the density. That's the equation you're given. That means the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, 90 divided by 85, and it's 1.06 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, this wood, death, ebony, has such a high density. It's more dense than water. You can see that because it has a density greater than one, which means this type of wood will sink actually in water. Okay, now we're going to do, what are we going to do next? Let's read the problem. Magnesium is a metal used to make alloys for airplanes. It has a relatively low density. Here's the density, 1.74 grams per centimeter cubed. We have a mass of 9.56 in this piece of um, magnesium. We want to know what is the volume. Now we're going to use our magic math triangle for our density equation to solve for the volume, we cover up the volume. You can see now it's the density divided by the mass. We write that down, write the equation down first. Volume is density divided by, excuse me, volume is the mass divided by the density. The mass is 9.56 grams. Density is 1.74 grams per centimeter cubed. Divide those two values, the mass divided by the density, and you get that the volume of that piece of magnesium would be 5.49 centimeters cubed. You can see you have a gram here on the top and a gram here on the top, and that would cancel, leaving you with just centimeters cubed, which that is the unit for volume. Okay, the last one we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for now what it says right here is what is the mass. Okay, we have a ruby. It's the largest ruby in the world. Its dimensions are 10.9 centimeters long, 9.10 centimeters wide and 5.80 centimeters high. We want to know if it has a density of 3.97 grams per centimeter cube, what is the mass? So now this time we're solving for the mass. So we're going to cover up the M. You can see we have left D and V. They're next to each other. We multiply density times volume. The mass is equal to the density times the volume. We're going to write down the density because that's given to us 3.97 grams per centimeter cube. And you'll notice the equation doesn't give us, or the problem doesn't give us the volume, but we know that we can calculate the volume as length times width times height. We just take those three values, and we're going to multiply them. Don't add them. You multiply those three together, and you get the volume of that ruby is 575.3 centimeters cubed. We're going to plug that into the equation for our volume, 3.97 times 575.3 centimeters cubed. And you get that the mass of that ruby, it's a pretty big ruby, 2,284 grams. Okay, so there you go. That's how you calculate density. In this video, we went over the definitions for the density mass and the volume. I showed you how to use the magic math triangle to solve the equation for density for mass and volume. And then we did three simple examples. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. 
leave me a thumbs up for this video. Give me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget the most important thing, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.